right guys, I just want to show you what I'm going to be up to in the next couple of days. Um, got some fall bulbs here. Um, just got to figure out where I'm going to plant them, but uh, I'll show you what I got. So this is an allium, the purple sensation. They're not the biggest of the allium family, but uh, they're really kind of pretty purple. And then we got some crocuses, and this is just a mix of yellow and purple and white. And then of course the daffodil mix. And I really like these daffodils with the orange centers there. I think that's really a cool contrast. And then tulips. And it's been about 15 years since I've planted tulips. So it'll be kind of cool to plant tulips again. I thought that was a really good combination, the, the pink and the white. <clears throat> and I wanted to throw in a little tip here on both recycling and also keeping track of seeds and what kind of seeds are in which uh, container. So I thought it was really cool to recycle these um, coconut shells. I picked them up at one of our local stores and um, really enjoy the, the fresh coconut water that's inside and then I eat um, the coconut that's on the inside too and then I'm left with these really cool planters um, which also are dual purpose because you can also put a little drainage hole in the bottom and then um, plant succulents in them. And uh, they just make really cute little planters. And then I have another one here with some more succulents and a strawberry plant. That's totally just some old <laughs> dried out coconut shell. So a little tip for you, what I wanted to tell you is, so you don't get your beans mixed up as to where you're shelling them into, because I have purple beans and I have these um, variety uh, green potted beans. Uh, I got them mixed up one day, I couldn't remember what container I'd put them in, so this is a little tip for me, save the shell, the little pod, and it'll tell you um, what type of seed that you will have. And this here is a... Um, purple, no not purple, sorry, it's a green pole bean. Um, it's just a mix of variety. It's from seed that I saved the year before. Um, I don't really know the name. Um, it could be like Blue Lake, it could be Kentucky Wonder, I'm not quite sure. And then moving along, so this is my purple pole beans and I just stuck the purple pot in there just so I can keep track of what these seeds are. And this is what I saved. I've got lots more that I saved, but this is just for this demonstration. So you can see the, the seeds are kind of got like this little bit of a, like a purple speckled molt to them. They're kind of cool. And they're a lot bigger than these other. So anyways, just a quick tip. I also saved some nasturtiums. These grow really nice and they just fill in and add so much color to the to the yard and the garden. And this is, I mean, I don't have to buy these next year. It's awesome. All right, so let me take you around to the garden. I'll show you where I'm thinking of maybe planting these uh, bulbs. My canna lily, the first one I've ever grown, is blooming. Looks, looks nice. Um, the tomatoes are, have pretty much had it. Um, this is all that's left after trimming all the, the blight off and um, just branches that weren't really even going to produce anything because we're so late in the season now that, uh, you know, we're really not, there's not a lot of time left um, for anything to really develop. The stuff that's here already will ripen, there's time for that, but there isn't any, any time for like new flowers um, and stuff like that. Uh, these are, I think, called something crimson. What is it? Um, yeah, I, I can't remember. I got my, my tag buried. Oh, wait, maybe it... Oh, that's not it. There's a tag in here somewhere. It's just the wood chips are so thick. I'm not sure where it's at. Uh, but it's some, some sort of crimson. Um, I'm not a real big fan. I mean, they're pretty to look at. Uh, they're just... They take a long time to ripen. Like they're not ripe until like, they're red underneath. You can see that's kind of an orange. And then when they're really not ripe, they're like a green. Um, but they just really lack flavor and they take a long time to ripen. So, um, and then my cucumbers didn't really do anything this year. I, I literally had two um, cucumbers this whole year that were actually a good size to eat. Um, I just really don't know. I've 
seem to have really bad luck growing cucumbers. And I had a lot more nasturtiums in this area. Uh, I had to pull some of them out because everything was just getting so overtaken. All my bell peppers were suffering. The other flowers up there were suffering just because it was just too packed in. I'll have to remember that next year um, to not plant the nasturtiums in the front here, but rather plant them in the back and then they'll climb up and look really cool. The orchard is doing good, getting some growth. Um, a couple of the fig trees aren't really doing too good, but I think they're just still adjusting and I think they'll be fine next year. I really need to mow my lawn. And I really need to uh, trim this wisteria here. It's really kind of getting out of control, but... Hi, ladies! <laughs> so these, these two, um, ones with the golden necks, the smaller ones. Uh, we rescued them recently from the Humane Society and they're, they're still trying to hold their own within this flock. There's definitely a pecking order and they're at, definitely at the bottom. Uh, this one here, she's kind of mean. We call her Bitchy Brown. We just really haven't named her anything else. And then the black and white one is uh, Waddles. And she's, she's really big, but she's docile. She doesn't pick on the other ones. Um, and she has the biggest and best uh. eggs too. <laughs> All right, let me show you where I'm thinking about planting these bulbs at. This is really filling in nicely. This is all Creeping Jenny, and I eventually want it to all just be all Creeping Jenny and Creeping Time, and I can just walk, walk on here just barefoot, not get any splinters from the bark. I think that would be really cool. They're like vultures. Oh wow, huh, surprised that little one actually tried stealing it. Ballsy. So anyways, okay. So this is the first spot I was thinking. I was thinking about having like a little crescent moon shaped uh, area of bulbs right here. I mean, I don't know, tulips, daffodils, crocuses. Um, definitely not the alliums. I want the alliums kind of, since they're taller, I want them like further back um, up against something taller maybe. Um, so that's one spot right there and I was thinking maybe right here too but I'm not quite sure because that's where the hose goes and I don't really want the hose going into the flowers all the time and like bumping into them although I could put hose guides around this I thought was a good spot just put like a like a nice drift right here or a clump of bulbs <laughs> they always got to be part of the action all right, and then right here, I was thinking was a good spot too. Just random spots that would look kind of nice, like tucked in to other areas. And as well as this area here, I was thinking about putting. And then what will eventually happen is I'll have the bulbs coming up and when they'll be actually coming up through the thyme. So the thyme and the succulents will cover this whole area eventually. And then the, in the springtime, the bulbs will be actually coming right up through it. And I just think it'll look really, really cool. And then again, the spot here, I thought this was a nice little corner. Of course, I'm going to have to keep uh, the strawberries uh, in check and trimmed away, but that's fine. It'll give me a good excuse. I've yet to see a butterfly on my butterfly bush, um, but I planted it like literally right after the butterflies left. Uh, my hibiscus, it's got some new new buds on it. I'm really looking forward to these. They're such huge buds. They're, buds. They're like pink and white. Um, no, they're like, more like light pink and then like a dark pink center. But they're like a satellite dish, man. They're just huge. They're like as big as my hand. All right, let's see where else. These tomatoes are doing really good, although they do have a considerable amount of cracking on them. I'm not really sure what caused that. I, you know, they say when they get too much water, but I really don't think that these have had too much water. Um, these ones don't seem to have it. And we haven't had any rain for like two months. It's been really, really hot and really smoky. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of wildfires around here and it's we've had the entire month of August has been nothing but thick smoke. I have not seen the mountains. <sighs> I think I've seen them once in the past four weeks. So this is B Central. This is a sedum that they're all on and every year it's the one spot where there's the largest concentration of bees and other insects. It's not just the bees. 
it's really amazing actually how many. Um, earlier I counted about 25 bees on here and the smell of these of these flowers and there's even like flies there's all kinds of insects insects that I usually don't even see like these weird little hovering flies and you got the bumblebees the honeybees I think there's mason bees as well flies um, yeah, and a lot of other ones that I don't even know the names of. But uh, it smells like sweet corn um, corn tortillas. <laughs> if you can if you can imagine what a sweet corn corn tortilla would taste like or smell like, sorry. Um, that's exactly what this stuff smells like. So I was thinking this would be another good spot for some bulbs and. Don't mind the mess. I didn't spruce up the garden or anything before this video. I just kind of left everything as is. Um, one thing to note that if you have, if you grow sunflowers, um, the blue jays and the birds will find them. Um, and as soon as they're ready for eating, like this one here, let's see if I can get in on that. I don't think the contrast is going to work. It's too bright. Okay. So, oh, here's a perfect example right here. So this outside stuff rubs off and then you have the seeds below it and when they're black they're pretty much ready and the, the birds know exactly when they're ready. And so what happens is they land on it and I'm not kidding you, this whole head within 15 minutes can be completely gone. And then what you're left with is this pretty little mess here. So, but I'll just look at the positive side and see that it's just adding mulch. <laughs> it's building my soil. <laughs> so anyways. I think that's gonna be another good spot right there, maybe for some tulips, daffodils. I'm not quite sure which ones yet. All right, and then I was also thinking in front of these new boxes that we just put up, which I actually haven't showed you guys yet. I did plan on doing a video um, for a long time to show you guys these boxes and um, I just really never got around to it. Uh, it's just been, it was so smoky. I just didn't want to come outside, so. I really haven't spent that much time in the garden this whole month and that's why I haven't had a whole lot of videos. So I was thinking about doing a clump here and then another clump here and then another clump there of different like bunches of different ones like maybe daffodils over here, maybe then with some alliums right there and then some little shorter crocuses uh, right there. And then kind of the same thing over here, kind of like mirroring <clears throat> the same idea. So that's kind of what I was thinking and I think, oh yeah. But before we go over there, I'll show you the other spots too, but before that, I'll show you these boxes too. And I got some, some uh, tangerine. What are these called? Um, oh, no, orange strawberry. Got some orange strawberry uh, tomatoes that are looking like they're starting to turn. They got a little bit of cracking. I think they'll be okay though. And then these ones are the chocolate cherry. They're just okay. They're a little bit bigger. They're a weird size. Like, I like the smaller cherry tomatoes that you can just pop right in your mouth. These ones you kind of got to take a bite out of, and when you try to take a bite out of a tomato that's like that, it just wants to kind of squirt. <laughs> All right, so what we've decided to do is uh, put a couple of big planters up here for our vegetable garden. We're just kind of expanding um, beyond the cinder block raised beds because what we were finding um, was that these beds, we started to call them the dead beds just because every single time we tried growing anything in them it would just do terrible, especially vegetables. Not so much uh, plants like flowers, but definitely vegetables. Like this kale was planted back in April and it just, this is as big as it gets. It never turns green. I'm not quite sure what's wrong with it. We've, I've put fertilizer and stuff down. I just don't know what is wrong, but this bed, and, and so I planted again. So this was planted in April. This was planted like um, in March. And it, again, it, I mean, it gets like two inches and just doesn't do anything. Uh, same thing, the beets that were planted. But, uh, so, and, and I've put in, I don't know what's wrong because I've done everything right that I was supposed to do. I remineralized. I put some, you know, the amazite uh, in there for adding minerals. I uh, put my own homemade compost, uh, lots of it too. Um, really good quality stuff. 
made with like coffee grounds and, and kitchen stra scraps and leaves and all kinds of stuff, grass clippings. Um, and then we also had some mulch on top too and it just, plus I, plus I put really good um, organic fertilizer before planting and that's, I mean all that combined it still didn't do good so I don't know. Um, the strawberries seem to like this bed, um, although strawberries seem to like like it wherever they're at, no matter what. Um, as you can see, the whole garden is being taken over by strawberries, but that's cool. <clears throat> um, so what I decided to do is not grow um, vegetables where they don't like to be grown, so I'm starting to slowly convert these into flower beds and just keep adding flowers in, tuck them in, you know, over the season so I'll have lots of color all season long. So that's kind of the plan. Um, so therefore, a lot of our um, area for growing vegetables shrank and so we needed to make some new ones and that's why we built these. Um, and I made them out of cedar uh, and they seem to be doing really, really good. This this whole row on the outside is radishes. Um, it's an Easter egg blend. So there's like three different colors, I think. And then there's beets. And I, I sewed everything really thick, um, which was fine because I wanted to come out here and use the and thin use the thinnings for um, in my salads. And then let's see. And then we got some dinosaur kale, which is actually my favorite kale. And then we've got a row of cilantro. So and everything's doing really good and then over here we have cilantro mixed with some swiss chard we have arugula mixed with some spinach um, this, this is red romaine here and then we have a whole row of uh, cilantro again i just love cilantro you can never have too much getting some nice sized tomatoes coming in that's a pretty good size it's got some weirdness going on, but sometimes that's just character. Oh yeah, I didn't even see that one. That's another nice one. And this tomato that volunteered itself in our compost bin is actually looking the best out of any of the tomatoes that we actually planted. It's doing really good, and we do got some tomatoes down below. Got a whole, look at that. Free tomatoes. <laughs> I just think that is so cool. So we got a bunch there, there's a bunch right here, and then we have a smaller bunch there. And then on, this is actually a separate tomato, and then we have two more tomatoes there, and another little bunch there. <clears throat> so it's actually pretty cool. Um, here's another tip for you. Uh, this is my biggest sunflower, it's a mammoth gray stripe. I definitely want to save the seeds because I want to save the genetics of the plant and plant them for next year. So I always save the seeds of the biggest one. And within, I was waiting for the seeds to get ready, which they're not even ready, not even close to being ready yet. And um, I came out one day and I seen all of this below. And I'm like, no. And I looked up and like half the head was gone. And we're talking just like overnight. So <laughs> um I'm like, what do I do? So I went in and grabbed a sack and stuck it over the head so they can mature and I can, uh, once they're mature enough, then I can cut the head off and take it inside for further drying. It just needs to mature a little bit more. So I found these two carrots earlier. I know this is a family show, but I kind of have to show this anyway. Thinking about putting some clumps of bulbs and um, yeah this is the prettiest nasturtium that I have I didn't actually I didn't even plant this um, it planted itself it came up uh, with the compost and uh, I'm definitely gonna save the seed off of that that jewel tone is so pretty when do you ever see those red nasturtiums like that so cool really vibrant look at this one it's amazing color Um, I got some beets and some carrots in here. The carrots are, are turning out good. Um, the beets, I need to harvest and make pickled beets. I was supposed to do that today, I just got too lazy. Um, <clears throat> once again, my cucumbers just are not doing very good. Uh, we got, I got two cucumbers off this entire plant. Um, so I don't know what it is with me and cucumbers. I'm just keep hoping for the next year, you know, that it'll be better. Um, I'm letting these pods go to seed because I want to save some more of these purple pole beans. And they're enormous. Look at the look at the size on some of these things. 
Look at that. Huge pods. Here's another big one. Look at that. <laughs> it's just huge. That's like, I don't know how long that is. Maybe 9 or 10 inches. <clears throat> so, planted a mum. That's doing really good. Um, I'm letting all this oregano go to seed, uh, or at least flower. I'm not letting it go to seed, but I'm just going to let it go to flower because the, the bees just love it. They're all over it. And this is a new addition. Oh, hi, Jinx. Came out of nowhere. So... Where in nature do you hardly ever see like a like a true blue? And this isn't even a true blue. It's actually got a little bit of purple in it. But um, I mean, it's pretty blue compared to that. I mean, that's like purple to me. So purple, blue, purple, blue. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hi. <laughs> okay. Um, what else? We haven't seen this corner yet. I got my pumpkins coming all the way over here. They're all the way over at the end now. Hi, buddy. So I just bought this um, really cool grass and it's a perennial grass. Uh, it's got these really neat, like feathery, um, I don't know, what do, you, what, what do you call these, the flowers? Blooms? <laughs> so, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I guess not. So yeah, we got some good pumpkins going on. Look at the size of this pumpkin. It's a really good size. I don't know if you can tell how big that is, but... Oop. The leaf got in the way. There's another one right next to it. Yeah, that's a, definitely a good size pumpkin. And then there's another one back here. This one too. Hmm. And then another one back here. And it's really light. I don't know why it's really light like that. It's got kind of a, a weird color to it. Very, very plain looking. Uh, pineapple guava is just doing okay. It keeps struggling. It keeps like wilting and at the tips of its leaves keep getting crust, like crispy and coming off. And these are, um, have li their leaves all year round. So uh, it's not going to look good even in the winter time, I'm afraid. <laughs> so my ground cherry is doing really good. I mean, it's gotten some really crazy new growth on it. Um, it looks like here's one that's ripe. These are so good. If you've never had a ground cherry, they're kind of fun to open too. You just go like that and they they look like a like a miniature tomatillo but they're um, they're sweeter and they're like a fruit they taste like a fruit and look at them all all those little bell-shaped things those are all gonna be ground cherries and they're really good um, oddly enough, I did plant some ground cherries this, this year from seed. They don't look anything like this. Um, the package said ground cherries, but they look nothing like this. This is way more like low to the ground. It's creeping. The other ground cherry I have is really tall and lanky. And the, the so-called cherries are like this big. Really, really big. I think that it's actually a tomatillo. The sunflowers are a nice backdrop. Hey, bud. <laughs> He's having a good day. He's having a good day. It's Saturday, September 1st. And it's uh, kind of getting in into the, the high 40s at night. And um, you can definitely tell that the season's changing for sure. And I still have my fuchsias. These last all spring, all summer. Um, maybe even all fall too until we get our first frost. But look at that pretty color combination.
And then there's another pumpkin. It's got kind of a cool bottom on it. Let's see if I can... Look at that. Cool striped bottom. I've never seen anything like that. I thought that was really cool. And then, uh... I've kind of started to take a liking to mums. Look at the pop of color that these provide. And they're usually cheap. I've, I picked up... Well, that's an aster, actually. I keep thinking that's a mum, but it, it looks like a mum, but it's actually an aster. So the, I paid five bucks for this and five bucks for that, and I think five bucks for that. Really good deal. Um, normally something like that would be like seven ninety nine. dollars um, Perennials have really, really gone up in price. Um, this grass I picked up for five bucks. That was a really good deal. Normally I would have to pay like eight or nine bucks for that, maybe even more if I got it at a nursery. Yeah. I guess that's pretty much it. Um, got the blackberries ripening in the background. The smoke bush is out of control. I need to, to like, take this all the way down to about right here. I mean, it really needs to be pruned, but I think I'm going to wait until fall, late fall, to do that. Oh, forgot one more spot that I want to show you. <clears throat> and it's where we put in the other raised bed. so pretty the nasturtiums those all planted themselves as well and the bustle sprouts are doing good I've had minimal pests I've had a little bit of uh, the cabbage worm and I've had a little bit of uh, aphid but not bad nothing real bad I always like this view right here <laughs> Hi, Jinx. Uh, the pumpkins are doing really good. They're getting a little bit of this powdery mildew, so I think I need to pick the leaves off that have the powdery mildew. Uh, but I got a pumpkin here. Pretty sure these are pie pumpkins, the sugar pie. Got another one here and two more there. And then there's also, oh, there's another one right there as well. And then also right here oh there's two more wow this is really a productive vine that's awesome the more the better Ooh, i really need to tie these up bad i didn't realize these were, these look so bad <laughs> so um yeah these really need to i need to get a string and tie all these up up against the trellis so they they cling on and aren't all flopped over but uh these didn't really germinate evenly because the birds got in there and ate a bunch of the sprouts. Um, but I've got some um, snap peas all in the back, kind of a variety. And then the next row is uh, Swiss chard. Um, but only a few came up, and the ones that came up look kind of, I don't know. They just don't look happy. Um, and then I got a whole, another row of kale, the dinosaur kale. And then this is, is that spinach? Oh, he's being all cautious. What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? <laughs> oh, he doesn't like the mango seed. It's just a mango seed. What's back there? That's funny. Anyways, uh, yeah, spinach. What are you doing? Oh, maybe it was that bee. Um, yeah, the spinach ain't looking too good, but that's okay. I've got lots of spinach in those other beds, so... Um, this is a new addition. This is another sedum. That one earlier that I showed you with all the bees on it, same thing, just a lot smaller. I have a ever-bearing strawberry here. Cause all my strawberries are June-bearing and I didn't realize um, that they made ones that, that produced fruit all season. So uh, this is really, really cool. This is another sedum and it's called a Sun Sparkler Dazzleberry. It's got such a pretty pink. I'm not really a big fan of pink, but that, with these, like, I don't, I don't even know, what color is that? Like a grayish green, or I don't want to say blue. But anyways, it's a really cool contrast. I also have a, a pink um, blueberry bush with pink berries right there. So I think that's going to be really cool. Just menagerie of sedums and stuff. This is a foxglove that's self-seeded. So this is cool, too. This is another um, uh, sedum, and it's getting ready to to bloom. I think it's going to have similar blooms to this other one. 
And this is a volunteer tomato and also a volunteer pansy. Um, it's got some, some tomatoes on it. We're probably not gonna get a, that big of a harvest because um, there's just not enough time left in the season. But it is a, a pretty plant and it provides greenery and... All right, well, I think that wraps up um, this little tour. All the sunflowers are blooming. This is the first time I actually planted a fall garden this year. Out of all the, the years I've been gardening, which has been about 16 years now, um, I've never planted a second crop of greens or beets or anything like that. It's so cool. It's like such an added bonus. And twice now I've come out and picked salad greens. In fact, I used them today too. So yeah, until the next video guys, have a great day.